Once you've come to know the Lord personally, then one of the most important things in your Christian life is learning how to take what God has done for you and to share with other people. The reason that God has left us here on this earth, one of the primary reasons is so that we can be a blessing to other people. And so as you start reaching out to other people, how do you know when God is leading you towards a person? How do you know when it's just you know, not just your normal physical response, but instead it's God speaking to you, uh, leading you, putting the desire in your heart to reach out and touch another person. Well, I want to share with you just some of the simple things that God has taught me about this, and it's made a huge difference in my life. First of all, before I could minister to anyone else, I needed to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that I was capable of ministering to other people. And to me, that happened when I began to start understanding what God had done for me, what God had put on the inside of me. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says this, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Before you can give out to somebody else, you have to have something to give. You, first of all, have to have a revelation of what God has placed on the inside of you. And hopefully by this time in this series, you've already come to learn some of the wonderful things that God has already done for you. And as you begin to start ministering to others, you need to be aware that it's not just you talking to them, but that it is God living on the inside of you and flowing through you and touching other people. Then the next step that made a huge difference in my life is a very simple principle from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. This says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Boy, this is a powerful statement. God is love. God doesn't just have love. This isn't just one of the characteristics of God. This is who God is. God is love. And here's the simple truth that God told me that when you feel love flow out of you for another person, then that's me flowing out of you. That's God because God is love. And if you will simply follow that emotion, that feeling of love towards another person, it'll be God. Now that needs to be qualified because the world has a cheap imitation of love. You know, in the Greek, there were three or four different words that described love, and it went all the way from just a friend type, friendship type of love to where it was a sexual love, all the way up to God's agape, supernatural type of love. In the English language, we just have one word for love. We say, I love my wife, and I love my dog, and I love ice cream, all in the same breath nearly. And hopefully there's a huge difference between the way you love your dog and the way you love your wife. But in the English language, it's not always expressed. But I'm talking about a God kind of love, not a sensual type of thing. And there's many ways, I could spend an hour or two discussing this, but in a nutshell, God's kind of love is un, it's not self-serving. It is never for a selfish purpose. It's never sexual, sensual but instead, it is a pure type of love. Uh, like I said, I could spend a lot of time trying to describe that, but basically, if you've ever experienced this supernatural, pure, God kind of love flow through you, it is very distinguishable from a sexual or a self-serving type of love where you love that person because of the advantage that it gives you. But I'm talking about that when you feel a God kind of love flow out of you towards another person, then that's God. And every time God flows, then I believe that there will be a gift of the Spirit available to minister to these people. The gifts of the Spirit are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There's many of them. Nine of them are listed right there. Uh, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirit, the working of miracles, uh, the gifts of healings, prophecy, interpretation of tongues, these types of things. So all of these things are available unto you. But you need to recognize that when God flows, one of these supernatural gifts is going to flow also because God is supernatural and He wants to touch these people's lives. An example of what I'm talking about is that when I was pastoring a church in Pritchett, Colorado, 
there was a woman and her husband that came to the service. There was nearly a hundred people in this room. I'd never seen them before. But as I was standing in ministry, I just felt compassion flow out of me towards this woman. I didn't know her, didn't know a thing about her, but I just kept feeling the love and the compassion of God being poured out towards this woman. And based on nothing but that, I didn't have a thing to say to her. I didn't know any information about her. I didn't know what I was going to do. But just because I knew that was God, it was compassion, godly type of love flowing towards this woman, I called her forth and said, God's got a word for you. I didn't have a thing to say to her. But I knew God was speaking to her. And I knew if I would take a step of faith that God would meet her. And so I called this woman forward. I said a lot of things. It was quite a while that I ministered to her. But one of the things I said to her was that you've lost someone close to you and you've been grieving. And you know, when I said this, this woman began to cry and you could tell that I'd hit a nerve, that this was God speaking through me. And it gave me even more boldness. I just kept talking to her. And I said, you've thought that it was God that killed them, but it's not God, it's the destroyer. And I just kept using this word over and over. It's the destroyer that has affected your loved one. And after it was all over, this woman came up and told me her story. And her son had died of leukemia. And uh, she was, of course, uh, grief-stricken over this. It had hurt her, and that's what the Lord was talking to her about. And before her son died, he was driving into this little town of Kim, Colorado. There was only about 100 people in this town. And as he drove in, he just saw this like demonic presence towering over this small town of Kim, Colorado. I mean, this demonic presence was hundreds of feet tall. And then he asked the Lord, he says, what is this? And the Lord said, it's the destroyer. The destroyer is the one who's given you leukemia and is trying to kill you. Now, their theology was such that they thought it was God that put this um, sickness on them. But God was trying to show him that it was not God. It was the d destroyer, this demonic power. He told that story to his mother, but they just weren't able to recover. They didn't have the foundation. The boy went ahead and died. And she was grieving, thinking that maybe God had done this to her son. But through that prophecy, through me calling her out, she not only got comfort, but she got revelation that God wasn't the one who killed her son. Satan had done it. She, she got rid of her anger and unforgiveness towards God for allowing this to happen. And she was able to go on and it made a huge difference in her life. And all of that started because I felt love, God kind of compassion go out towards her. Here's another scripture in Matthew 14, 14. It says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them, and He healed their sick. Compassion is the key to flowing in the supernatural power of God. If you want to minister to other people, ask God to give you a love for other people. Ask God to start loving other people through you. And then when you feel that compassion flow, all you got to do is just follow it up. I've done this before when I just was praying and all of a sudden I felt a compassion for somebody. I didn't know anything to say, but I'd just call them up and say, I just want you to know that I was praying and God put you on my heart. And I just felt the love of God for you. And many, many, many times I've had those people say, boy, this was God. I remember once a person who was actually instrumental in getting me started in ministry. I'd, I hadn't seen them in 10 years but I just felt a compassion for them one day. And I had to find them because the number that I had for them didn't work. I kept calling around until I got the woman's parents number. I was going to call and ask them where she was. And she answered the phone. And when I told her who it was, she hung up. And I thought, well, that didn't go very good. And I was just sitting at my desk waiting. And in a few minutes, she called back and she apologized. And she said, We've lost everything. We lost our house today. Our house was repossessed and I was so bitter and angry. I was saying, God, if there is a God, why doesn't somebody minister to us? Why doesn't somebody call us? Even though we aren't in our house anymore, you know where we are. Somebody could find us. And at that exact moment, I called. You know why? Because I just felt compassion. And that's God. Many of you feel compassion for people, but sometimes you dismiss it as, oh, I wonder what's happening with so-and-so, and you don't think about it. I want you to realize that this is what I call the divine flow. 
when you feel godly love and compassion flow out of you for someone else, that's God flowing out of you towards that person, and He's always got something supernatural that He's wanting to do in their life. And so I encourage you to just let this compassion, it's already there. If you're born again, you do have the love of Christ on the inside of you. And it's just a matter of quieting yourself and getting to where you aren't thinking about yourself, but you start thinking about someone else. And then when you start feeling this compassion flow, follow it, and God will use that divine flow to flow through you and touch other people's lives.